mindset and also um, guiding your thinking. Think about what you're thinking about. Pay attention to what you're paying attention to. And um, because, you know, if you clean up your input, and you focus in on something different, then things will change. But you have to make that change first. And so you're going to be faced with challenges with that. And it may be financial, it may be demographic, it may be technology. But there is some way that, again, you can uh, develop your lifelong learning skills. But I'm your host, Buffy Williams. And at this time, we're going to take a short break. And I hope that you join us after the break. Right now, you might be struggling through your classes or even failing them. You might be worried that you may not finish high school. There might have even been a thought that you may not be smart enough. Well, the New Heights Educational Group begs to differ. We not only think you are smart enough, but with our help, you will complete your high school diploma. The New Heights Educational Group strives to improve your academic success through its tutoring services. To learn more, please visit newheightseducation.org and contact us. New Heights Educational Group educational resources to help reach your goals. This podcast is brought to you by Silicon Valley High School, the world's fastest growing, video-based, self-paced, teacher-supported, fully accredited online school that's recommended by more than 96% of students. Take individual courses at just $95 each or earn your high school diploma at any age. Check us out at svhs.co. Welcome back. I'm your host, Buffy Williams, and you're listening to the New Heights Educational Group, the New Heights Show on Education. And tonight's topic is lifelong learner. And we just discussed the different levels of interest that um, people may have that entails different ways of learning. And we also discussed that you need to have a focus and a self-control if you're thinking about lifelong learning and picking up a different skill. Um, And thinking about um, lifelong learning and us as humans, can you uh, even just imagine if every human being and the potential that we could have to extend uh, our educational opportunities and our mindset if we were to be more inclusive of people, not based on what they currently know, but what they would be willing to explore in an informal setting to kind of better our culture and better our communities and better ourselves. And so it kind of improves the quality of our life and it can create, you know, a part of your life that, you know, it can affect, it could be, it could be a spillover into your community and make things um, just better in general for all of us. And it could have just such a positive impact on society. And when we think about um, things that restrict us from lifelong learning could be simply just, you know, not being motivated. But I'm hoping that with today's show that it motivates you to at least explore those things that you may be interested in. And don't be fearful, because remember that even geniuses failed at something because they had to, you know, perfect that skill and they had to continue to hone in the things that or weed out the things that weren't working for them and then continue to work and improve on those skills. And so you shouldn't real you shouldn't be fearful of failure because it always teaches you something. So And looking at lifelong learning and and structured and unstructured ways of learning, um, the reality is that most of us have a goal outside of our normal life or normal job or school. And it's that curiosity that kind of builds on the lifelong learning process. Because as a child, we learn to talk, we learn to ride a bike, and this is all before we start school, right? And so someone is teaching you in an informal way how to do those things, and or you learn those things informally on your own or instinctively on your own through trial and error. Um, And then also as adults, you know, learning how to use uh, a smartphone or learning how to cook a new dish or anything like that. We're continually learning through trial and error as we go through life. And so some of us have a natural interest and a natural curiosity um, for things and it motivates us to want to learn other things. And then some of us, you know, are motivated by others when we see others and their potential. Um, because some it, 
in some of the well most of the things that I have explored really doesn't require uh, money or very minimal cost and then you know it just really takes me being personally motivated in order to um, continue on with that practice but you do have to be committed to it and um, the types of behaviors that we exhibit from day to day um, and trying to hone in those talents um, can be productive for our employers it, it can expand us in, in a different way it could change our mindset and get us to look at new problems and new solutions and be more adaptable be more flexible and also be more competitive because that means that we're, we're looking at it with a different mindset. And so if you do something um, that is different from your normal routine, just remember that you can learn from different ways. You can learn from browsing the Internet. And I just told you about a TED Talk that I listened to. It could be something as simple as that. It could be reading a book or a magazine or a newspaper um, but just engaging in things that you're personally interested in. And I, there are a few steps in the research that uh, I wanted to go over with you. And the first one is recognizing your own personal interests. And so we kind of talked about that a little bit and how do you envision your future and what do you have a passion for and what is it that you've always wanted to explore for yourself or learn more about. And then the second thing is to make a list of the things that you would like to learn or you would like to be able to do and just explore those things um, through the internet if you have you know that accessible I know that through COVID-19 it might be a little bit difficult to get to the public library but that's always a great resource um, when I was young we just simply uh, I think about not every household in the community but most of the households and if we didn't we would share it whole encyclopedias and we would just pull them off the shelf and kind of explore that world um, in that way. Um, but now, how fortunate are we that most people have a smartphone um, where they can just at their fingertips explore things? I get um, I laughed at pretty frequently by my friends for pulling out books <laughs> when we can also pull out our smartphones. But um, that's just me. I'm kind of old school like that. I do embrace technology, but sometimes I just like the tangible feel of a book in my hand. So the, then the next step is um, identifying how you would like to get involved and looking at the available resources for you. And so that could, again, simply be your public library, um, blogs or magazines, or even podcasts like this one. And so every person has different gifts and, you know, just don't be afraid to explore and, and do some hard work and be dedicated to whatever that is. Because remember, life is a marathon, not a sprint. And so we have, um, as humans, infinite um, capacity to be able to learn the things that we want to learn. We just have to do it. And so then you can also um, structure your learning into your life. And so once you decide to do lifelong learning, you have to fit it into your busy schedule at some point. And with us um, being uh, or having more time for COVID-19, even if you're having to work, you still have more personal time because we can't get out and about like we we did in the past. And so now you may have more personal time and, and be realistic about it. You know, don't go overboard and just say, I'm going to just go hardcore. If you spend 15 minutes a day doing um, something that you want to train on or you have a passion for, those 15 minutes can make a big difference in your lifelong learning. And then uh, we talked about making a commitment, but also making sure that those are realistic um, expectations and just try to develop those skills, whether it's sewing, cooking, um, public speaking, learning a new language, um, it could be martial arts or skiing in the wintertime, uh, learning a new exercise or uh, learning a new device. You know, whatever it is for you, I encourage you to um, engage in this and 
renew your motivation for lifelong learning because we are all lifelong learners whether we do it intentionally or unintentionally we're always learning something so uh, on today's episode we are looking at your view of lifelong learning and how it relates to us on the continuum of life and I hope that uh, on tonight's episode that you have um, learned from my small efforts to become a lifelong learner. Uh, I have a natural curiosity for a few things in life, and so I'm not afraid to um, try those things and um, do the best I can, I guess, until I lose interest in it. But I always try to uh, use those things to kind of better me in my professional career and my personal and social life. So I don't tend to just drop things off. I'm sure that there are things that I have tried that I have not been great at. But again, remember the analogy of the symphony because at one point in your life, all those things that you have learned or all those things that you've gleaned from those things that you've tried are going to seamlessly blend together. And then you'll have your aha moment and you'll know why you did those things. You'll know why you encountered those things. You know why you explored those things. And all those things will seamlessly blend together and then you'll know your why. But I encourage you to um, pursue the things that you're passionate about. Be kind to yourself, be gentle to yourself, and be gentle to others. And I am your host, Buffy Williams, and I hope that this episode of Lifelong Learners was um, helpful for you. And on next week, we're going to revisit the topic of the IEP process, and we're going to expound on our previous segment on that. And so if you didn't listen to our previous um, episode on the IEP process, I encourage you to go to Spreaker and download that and listen to it before next week's show. Again, I'm your host, Buffy Williams, and thank you for joining us for tonight's show. We hope that you join us next week. That's our time, and you have been listening to the New Heights Show on Education. I'm your host, Buffy Williams. If you like what you've heard, search for us on your smart speaker and listen to us anytime. Thank you for listening. Good night. Until we meet again next Tuesday night, 6 p.m. Central Standard Time, 7 o'clock p.m. Eastern Standard Time, as we discuss next week's topic. Enjoy expanded content from the New Heights Education Group host on Blog Talk, iTunes, SoundCloud, Spreaker, and Watch No Learning. We hope you enjoyed today's show. Don't forget to rate us and follow us on your podcast player. Check out our show page, radio.newheightseducation.org, for monthly announcements and other happenings.